Spooky XD. What's up, dogger? You wanna come be on the camera? Come here. You can be on the camera. Say hello, Spooky. You know, something I've always heard people say is that, you know, different fish species are super tasty. And, you know, that's something I want to test. And I want to do that by trying it with unseasoned fish. Now, I've never had fish that was unseasoned. So I want to see what it tastes like on its own with nothing else and see if it's actually tasty. All right, let's go fishing. Come follow me down. Go to the park and walk through the town. Nobody's here. All right, we made it out here. And I thought it was going to be one of those days where we had a ton of murky water like we've been having. But of course, today, crystal clear water. So maybe the tandem or the diamondback rig isn't ideal, but we're going to try it anyway. Water's back up a little bit too, which is good. I'd like to see that. Probably why the water's clear. Woohoo! The water's colder than it was. Still not as cold as it should be for this time of year though. So I'm happy about that. Something I found about this Diamondback rig is if you don't give it real real tight pops, it's not gonna make any noise. So you have to give it pretty good pops. Kind of just bounce it along, it's not gonna make much noise at all. Incoming tide actually. Another reason why it's nice and clear. Don't have all that sediment coming out from the outgoing tide. Just nice clean water. Well, <laughs> as clean as the Corpus Christi Bay can be. Oh, that was a bite. That was a little tiny bite though. What the heck was that? Those lizard fish? That's not my rig too. Maybe a lizard fish or just one of those tiny speckled trout that I'm so good at catching. Oh, there's a fish. And we lost him, dude. He must have been on that. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Are oh, you bit again? Not that time, bro. Ooh, it feels pretty good, man. Are you gonna keep? Are you gonna keep? Keep to eat? I don't know, it's gonna be close. He's looking a little bit small now. Look at that, he got the chatterway too. Proof of concept. You're gonna be small too. Yep, 14 and <laughs> seven eighths. But we have proven that the fish want to hit the chatterway and that's why we got a hook on there. Nice. Now, lots of times when you catch one in the current, they're going to be in school, so you want to get it back out there as soon as possible. Oh, this is a, this is a dink. Dang it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I swear, man, I catch my new small PB every day. Hitting the shadow weight again, though. How about that? I might have to wade through 15 dinks before we get a keeper. I don't mind catching 15 little guys though. Like I said, man, they travel in schools. Haven't had a bite since. We just gotta wait for the next one to come through. Oh, you know what? Let's try throwing on a uh, gulp swimming mullet so we can get some scent to go along with our rattle. You can find out this uh, chicken boy lures. It's just a little tiny little shrimp. I don't know what to think about it yet. But I do know the gulp swim mullet's good. So let's throw that guy on there. Oh wow, I was about to reel it in we got a hit. <laughs> little jumping trout. He was on that chatterway too. And we got another bite. Oh my gosh, dude. School's coming through right now. And we somehow are catching all these fish. Can't catch one, one keeper. And this guy is definitely no keeper. Just gotta keep sifting through these dinkers so we can get to our trophy 16 incher. Oh, that's his, this is actually a good fish right here. Let's try not to lose this puppy. This is 
is the trophy 16 incher. Now this guy's more than 16, I think. No, he's not even that big. <laughs> I just been catching those dinks, man. Anything feels giant. Oh, because he's in the current, that's why. <laughs> You're looking short, my man. You're looking. Oh, there's one. Finally, hooked up. Caught him right on this point again. This could be a keeper, but you never know. It might be a dink. And it is not a keeper. It is a dink. Again on the, the rattling... Jeez, what is it called? The chatterweight. Got him on the chatterweight, man. They're eating that thing up. I knew they were hitting it. And that's why I put a hook on it. Where's your big sister? Well, we have run out of time. So the last Hail Mary, we got a top water. See if we can catch one in the overtime. Head on the town, thinking about All right, wind has been unforgiving this year. Hopefully this bridge gives us that sweet, sweet wind cover. Wind protection. Ooh, low water. Not good. Not good. Oh, beautiful water though. Wow. Going with the classic tandem rig with gulp swim mullets. Check that drag, man. Check that drag. All right. First cast is always the best cast. First cast, first fish. Just kidding. Second cast. First fish. Terrific. That's even better. Oh wow, on the fall. This our keeper. Mm. It's feeling bigger than the dinks at least. Could it be? Could it possibly be? A keeper fish? You're feeling bigger, my man. You're feeling a lot bigger. Oh, it's a keeper. We did it. We just need to land him. You're done, Bo. Bro. <laughs> You're done, bro. You're getting cooked. You're getting cooked. Actually, why don't you come around the side of the rock or just, you know, land yourself. Gotcha. If you're 16, we're out of here, buddy. If you're 15, we're out of here. Oh yeah, 15 and a quarter. We're out. Do you believe it? We actually got a keeper. Miracles do happen. So I'm sure most of you guys know this is a speckled trout uh, in the cyanid family. It is called a trout, but it is not actually in the salmonid family, which is gonna be your trout and uh, salmon. And easy way to know that is most salmonids have a adipose fin. There's a little fin right here. This guy does not have that. His dorsal, second dorsal, actually goes pretty much uh, where, where that adipose fin would normally be. I guess they kind of do look like trout with these little speckles, a little bit like Rainbow trout, just different color. Nope, he's just in the croaker family. All right, let's hack and slash this guy into pieces. All right, we got our beautiful little fillets here, and the purpose of this video was to try fish unseasoned. So one of these I'm gonna leave unseasoned, and one of them I'm gonna season pretty heavily. All right, for the seasoned one, we're gonna use just a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of pepper, some paprika, paprika. And of course we have to go with my man Cayenne. <laughs> and we're just gonna be baking these suckers in the oven. All right, the fish should be done. Hopefully it's nice and flaky. Can't even tell which one's seasoned. It's that one. 
There it is. We got our seasoned and unseasoned. Too bad I'm an idiot. And I broke it up into pieces when I was picking it up. All right, here we go. Moment of truth with the unseasoned fish. Let's see how this tastes. Let's get a nice little piece here. I don't know, I don't have high hopes to be honest with you. Here we go. Hmm. You know what? It's actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. It has a little bit of a fishy taste, you know, considering it's fish, but it also has like a kind of a nutty taste. It's actually really good. Completely unseasoned. You know, people say speckled trout is a tasty fish, and they're right. And I already knew that, but even without seasoning, very good. Hey, if you like eating some fish, give this video a like, and if you're new, consider subscribing. Hey, thanks, guys. See you. All right, bye. Head on the town, thinking about the bridges and bells.